well, uh, blessed people, the Lord has spoken with me about the big meeting coming into Nakuru, coming up into Nakuru, and coming up soon uh, towards the end of this year, at the end of year and New Year's Eve, very, very mighty meeting that is coming up in Nakuru. And there's going to be a tremendous visitation of the Lord. And this is such an astounding time in the history of the church because these are the visitations that count down, that mark the time the Bible promised about, when the Bible promised the latter glory, the latter visitation that would come. And we did, we are so blessed that uh, in this generation, you people, you are seeing this visitation, the visitation that the Lord Jesus himself promised would percolate, would come in and vibrate, would throb the church and the nations, the vibrant hour for the church when there will be a vibrant church, a revived church, the visitations that would revive the church of Christ. And this is a beautiful time in the history of the earth, in the history of the nations, and most importantly, in the history of the church and the Christian believer. And so, coming up to Nakuru is a big, big visitation. There will be a lot of historic healing. The Lord is coming to heal and mass. Many, many creepers will get up. He has spoken with me. He has shown me this meeting. And I see many, many creepers get up and walk. It will be astounding. It will be a wonder of his own. Many, many blind eyes see many death years here and all that. And then many conditions under the sun, all conditions under the sun, will have to bow down and obey the blood of Jesus, the mighty, 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 wonder-working blood of Jesus that was shed at the Calvary cross. And that becomes in itself such a great awakening, a great visitation of the hour, and awakening to the present-day church. This is the hour when the Lord is now speaking to this generation in very clear terms, in direct terms. You can see that the conversation is mostly un, it's unveiled. It's not veiled. It's totally unveiled. It's unconcealed. It's a clean conversation. It's a clear conversation. And all these visitations you see here, they are meant to awaken the church. These visitations that are coming at this hour, they speak a great deal. They speak a greater message, a deeper message to the church. Like, now what is coming up to Nakuru, coming to Nakuru for the end of year meeting, and it's such a big, big visitation that is coming to Nakuru, a historic visitation. I say it, I have seen so many cripples that will get up and walk, so many blind that will see, so many deaf that will hear, so many mute, paralytic, spinal cord injuries, wounds dried up, HIV, cancers will dry from the blood of the people. And it was such a shocking time, a very, very significant visitation for this hour. I say these visitations demarcate, they demarcate a very important landmark within the zero countdown towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. And they point this generation and awaken the church, awaken the nation, awaken the believer that look, time has passed and the visitation that the Messiah and Jehovah Yahweh promised the latter visitation is here. And so therefore, it is for preparing for the glorious coming of the Messiah. And that's why all these visitations that the Lord is using to recruit the minds of people, to summon the attention of the church, to summon and rendition, to rendition the souls of men, the salvation of men to this entry, this glorious entry, these visitations are very significant. They are significant visitations because they are the ones that were promised in the Bible. They were promised by the Lord that they would come and purge the cross of the church. They would come and awaken the sleeping church, the sleeping giant, so to say. They would awaken the sleeping church. They would awaken the believer. They would bring rekindle into the memory of the believer, of the Christianity and the salvation of the believer, the memory of your salvation, that look, in the first case, this is the reason why you became born again, that one day you would see the kingdom of glory. And so I have seen a mega, mega visitation 
coming to the meeting in Nakuru. And this is going to be a blessed time because it begins with 29th, a mega, mega healing service. And I've seen a lot of people being healed as they enter, even before the two dreadful prophets of the Lord enter the venue. When the people are just coming to the venue, and then you see some of them are getting healed at the gate, some of them before, just on the road, and some of them as they enter the venue. So it's going to be a time setter. It's going to be such a standard. It's going to be a benchmark. It's going to be such a visitation nobody wants to miss because the Lord is speaking with absolute clarity. Now he has come out openly to conversation with the church and is seeking the soul of the Christian believer. He is talking to the Christian. He is talking to him and her. And he's telling the Christian, look, I have come all the way from heaven to seek your attention. The day, what day and hour is not known is near because the visitations that mark that day are here. The visitations that mark that season are here so that the believer may prepare for that day whose day and hour is not known. But now, it becomes absolutely very critical, beloved people, for all nations to partake of such significant and fundamental paramount visitation. What is this level of significance and paramount? It is very important to realize that these visitations, this visitation in particular that is coming to Nakuru, Kenya, is way bigger, much bigger than Kenya. How I long that the entire earth could partake of this visitation because it is much, much bigger than Kenya. It's bigger than Africa. This is a global to the body of Christ. And that's why sometimes, you know, I am at loss. I don't have the words to describe how I feel that every nation could have been given the same opportunity if our God was democratic at all, to give every nation the same opportunity to experience this kind of revival, historic revival, outpour of his glory, this awakening, this call, the clarion call to repentance, the call to return to righteousness, the call to live a holier living, a holier Christian life, to be holy, and that is, in essence, the way of being prepared, of ensuring that you observe preparedness towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. And so now that this visitation coming to Nakuru is going to be this much significant, and I have seen heaven open, and then I've seen the glory of God, I've seen the splendor, I've seen the beauty and the exorbitance, I've seen how lucrative, how expensive and costly the heavenly glory is. God Almighty, Jehovah Yahweh, my friend, God the Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is my friend, he has already taken me close to the door of heaven, and he stood me out and opened heaven. He opened the door to heaven, and he showed me the exorbitant glory. I see the bluish-like glory in heaven, inside heaven, lining the expanse of heaven, and he has already opened heaven to be able to visit this meeting, beloved people. After that, he took me into heaven, of course. But uh, the Lord is speaking absolutely very clearly to the Christian believer, to this generation, to these peoples of this hour, the church of this day, the present day church, and saying, look, this is the hour when you are now living under the open heaven. So you'd rather know that. you rather know that the visitation, the latter visitation of open heaven that was promised by God the Father himself, and then promised by Christ Jesus the Messiah. That visitation is currently ongoing, and the Lord has set forth by his wisdom and hidden counsel, his very treasured counsel in the upper chambers of wisdom, the upper chambers of the counsel of the Lord in his throne. He has made a determination that Nakuru be the venue at which to unleash, at which to reveal his latter visitation. Is latter glory, beloved people. And that's why, if that be the case, then it's going to be quite significant that all nations partake of this. How I long that every single Christian believer, every nation, 
every community were given the golden opportunity of this hour to partake of these visitations that mark our days, that mark the days towards the coming of Christ Jesus the Lord. The days that mark, that essentially define our zero count down towards the return of the Christ to take the glorious church, the gathering of the saints, the entry of the church into eternity. And so, that be the case, beloved people, then now it's important that every nation will recognize their hour of visitation. I know there's a lot of windows going on all over the world right now on matter of Christianity, but God Almighty has now come out very clearly to confirm to the nation that this is my voice. Listen to this voice. So in so doing, then you are able to be reawakened and rekindled to the visitation that were promised and defined the zero countdown to the return of the Messiah. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 19, why I'm saying so, verse 44, he says, And shall lay thee even with the ground, and shall lay thee even with the ground, he continues on to say, and your children within thee, within you, and they shall not leave in you one stone on another, because you knew not the time of your visitation. In other words, because you knew not the time of God coming to you. And that is the premise, that is the direction I'm coming from. When I say, sometimes I feel sad if some nation or some believer out there will not be aware that this is the hour of their visitation. Because these are the visitations that mold the heavenly church. They are the visitations that hide the growth of the Christian salvation. They are the visitations that season and mature the Christian to prepare them for eternity. And time is short. So this entire process of preparation is taking place in a very short time. But you see now, in the scripture I have read, and they shall lay thee even with the ground, and your children within you, and they shall not live in you one stone on another, because you knew not the time of your visitation, because you knew not the time of God coming to you. So this is so astounding, beloved people, because you see a reflection of that scripture, and this is talking about Israel. When he was coming to Israel, Israel did not recognize. They were not able to rekindle the inner centers of their faculties within their spiritual domain to understand that this is the hour of our visitation. This is the king of glory. This is the king of Israel. The one that is coming is the Messiah. And because they failed to do that recognition, then he said that to them, but it's amazing that as he talks about how now the city of Jerusalem would see destruction, demolition, tribulation, would see tremendous uh, distress because of that failure to recognize the hour of God coming to them. Then when you read, you see a synonym now. When you now read Matthew 24, verse 2, again I'm reading Matthew 24, two. Do you see all these things? He asked, truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. So he uses the same narrative of the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. Then he now brings it to the temple. Then he says the temple will be destroyed in like manner, meaning the temple will be destroyed and the city destroyed. And there are many other versions he says. But he answered, you see all these. Do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Many, many versions you can read. New American Standard Bible says, and he say to them, do you not see all these things? Truly I say unto you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. So all these things, beloved people, describing one thing, describing the temple of God, describing a people 
describing a generation, a class, describing those that fail to recognize their hour of visitation. And that's why I approached you from this premise on this day. When I said, how awesome are the visitations of this hour? You really, really, really have to be really, really, really spiritually very blind to fail to see the obvious. This obvious visitation that Jehovah Yahweh has laid out before the nation and laid out before the church and laid out and arrayed before the Christian believer. And so this is a beautiful time that even I can come to you after the Lord has conversation with me and bring to you the awakening to the fact that make sure you are sensitive and alert to recognize your hour of visitation. Because this is the visitation that prepares the church, prepares the believer, prepares the nation, prepares the earth for the return of the Christ to gather the saints. And it's such a powerful, beautiful time in the entire history of the church, beloved people. And that's why this is such a monumental moment. It's an hour that no one can afford to miss. Everybody would want to be part of this visitation. In the book of Isaiah, so many scriptures I would read for you. In Isaiah chapter 10 verse 3 says, What will you do on the day of reckoning when devastation comes from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? So this is so powerful because it's saying that what is coming ahead is such a monument of destruction. And we know very well the great tribulation. We know very well that he that speaks with you is a major, major principle. You see, the two of them, they go out. I have seen now when the great tribulation kicks in and the darkness consumes, the two now split. I know now you can see them one taller than the other and so forth. But then I've seen the two split and each of them calls fire from heaven. They light up a fire and that fire becomes the only source of light during the great tribulation. But in Isaiah 10, 3, he speaks out very clearly on the humongous, the big and ugly that is coming. And he says, further on, he says, Jeremiah eleven twenty three, There will be no remnant, for I will bring disaster on the people of Anathoth in the year of their punishment. And it goes on and on. I heard it bad. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, he gives the reasons for that. Then he says, this is the church. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and will have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood, and until the end, there will be war. Desolation have been decreed. So, beloved people, the signs and the warning of not being able to realize, recognize, Take and realize the visitation of this hour are vivid. They really rise up stuck high in the Bible as a contract that nobody can say they cannot see this. And that's why I'm saying that the visitation that is coming to Nakuru, then you put it together with the visitation in Lima, Peru, which is still very fresh in your mind, and then you realize that the Lord is speaking pure, clear terms to this generation. That the Lord is loving this generation. He is making a lot of gestures over He is moving, he is, he is, he is extending a hand. He said, please prepare. Please prepare. You cannot fail to see this. Please prepare. But when that day does happen, it is quite calamitous, beloved people. And that's why I see now the big meeting, the grand visitation that the Lord God, Jehovah Yahweh, has promised coming to Nakuru. And that's why I feel very sad for the other nations. And I'm so glad that a lot of them are now making effort to make sure they partake of this visitation. And so we all need to understand that preparedness is key. Recognizing the hour of God coming to you. When one stands before you and says, I have seen the cloud of God coming. I've seen Yahweh coming, Jehovah Yahweh coming. That is a monument. That's a very big thing, beloved people. You cannot ignore that. Distance cannot be an issue on that one. Because that is the visitation of Jehovah, you are God. And if God were to be democratic, probably this could
could have been a multiplier across the land, across the earth, across the nation. But the Lord in his wisdom has chosen Nakuru to be the place, the pavilion at which he will launch his visitation. He will launch his glory, beloved people. And again, the purpose of all this is that you may repent, even as a believer, turn away from sin and be holy. For without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. That is really the irreducible bottom line that all this is here towards preparing the church, but realizing the preparation is a holy Christian living. And that's why this is the most historic time, the most blessed time to be born again, the most awesome time to be alive as a Christian. And for the churches out there, for the Christians, the pastors, whosoever is tuned in, this is really the hour to evangelize the religion of the cross of Jesus at Calvary, the religion of the blood of Jesus at Calvary that was poured out for all men. This is the hour to tell them, look, the only one and only true religion is the religion of the cross. It is the only religion, the religion of the Christ, the religion of Jesus, the religion of Jehovah, the religion of the perfect Lamb of God. That is the only religion that does give people hope, so much hope, beyond the tombs of this world. May the Lord bless you as you prepare for the coming of the Messiah and also in the interim as you prepare for the glorious, glorious, super glorious visitation that is coming to Nakuru, Kenya in a mighty, mighty manner to define the time and the countdown towards the coming of the King of Glory. So that's what I have a rim. Toda Hashem, Baruch Hashem.